All right, the Reds talking Reds, Gareth Roberts, Ian Ryan, Monday morning, uh, and talking Reds this week is in association with Blue Air. Uh, Blue Air fly out from Speak Airport, John <coughs> Lennon Airport, right, and you can go to Alicante, Mallorca, Malaga, Rome, Milan, Bucharest, and Transylvania. So guess where we're going with them? <laughs> <laughs> Rome. Um, so yeah, we'll talk about Rome in a bit. But first off, uh, the news this morning that's come out is that uh, Jelko Buvach, I've had a good go at saying his well name done, there. Um, it looks like he's jibbed it. To be in, in all honesty, but yeah, um, Liverpool have put out a statement saying um, he's having a break basically for personal reasons. Uh, but there was another story last night which suggested that he's fell out with with Jurgen Klopp. Uh, probably the truth is somewhere in between, as usual, but. It's obviously a really mad time for the assistant manager uh, to, to, to go. Um, so that suggests that you know there is something quite catastrophic taking place, some kind of argument, some kind of disagreement. Uh, either way, it's not ideal. It, it, it goes without <coughs> saying. And you know those two have worked together since 2001 at Mainzer. Um, and there's a story uh, well known really that you know the pair of them when they work together they both had ambitions to be a coach yeah. to, get, to get into management and they basically promised each other that yeah. when when one got the job the other one would give the other one a job absolutely and i you know you and you've seen you know Klopp be sort of faithful to him all along if you like you know he got a new six-year deal he insisted that uh, the rest of the staff basically got six-year deals and he's always gone on about you know how they work so well together you know Buvak the brains, the other fellas the eyes. Yeah. Uh, you know, Linders was another one where you know he was always full of praise for him as well. And then he left and he's got his job out in Holland now. Um, either way, it's it, it's not ideal, and it, it's one of them as well where you think, why does this always happen? I know. Um, because you know you had the one with uh, Benitez, um, Paco. Paco yeah. left. Yeah. All of a sudden, you had uh, Julia with uh, Patrice Berge. I've got When he left as well, and then, you know, that was sort of, I remember that one, it was sort of dressed up at the time. Oh, it's fine, he's just gone to take some other job. But then he was trying to get him back again. Yeah. Um, and this feels like another one. I mean, you know, the clubs, organisations, big businesses, they try to dress things up, they do a bit of PR around things. That's what this statement feels like. I mean, speaking from the position of someone who's uh, been suspended from work in the past. <laughs> um, I, I will talk, I'll, talk, I'll tell you another time. Uh, but, but, you know, they do put out silly little statements so that, uh, you know, that rather than saying what's really happened, I told my manager to fuck off. Uh, and so, you know, the, um, this, this feels like there's a little bit of PR going on and, and it, is a, it is a falling out and it's not ideal. Nail on the head, I think there with the, the line PR, I think that it feels very much like PR spin. The timing of it, as you said, it couldn't be any worse. I mean, when you start using phrases like personal reasons, it's hard to know what's going on, isn't it? Because mm. you, can't, you, you can't delve too much because it could be a multitude of things. But for it to happen at this stage of the season, when you're about to play your biggest game of the season, it just feels very Liverpool, doesn't it, in terms of preparation. We never do things the easy way. Um, but I put something out before on Twitter. I'll be amazed if we ever see Buvak at the club again. Something's clearly gone on for me. Honigstein put something out. Um, this morning to say, you know, both of these, you no know, Klopp and Buvak have had bust ups in the past, but they've always come back together. You know, I think if you're working that close with someone day to day, you know yourself, mate. You know, mm. you're not going to get on with everyone no, all not. the time, every minute of the day. You're going to have disagreements. You want disagreements because you want someone else's opinion. You can't have, you can't be surrounded by yes men all the time. That's mm. not what you want as a football manager. But this feels different, and I think if you've been. If you're following football for long enough, you've been around football for long enough, you get a sense, don't you, when it, it feels like there's something not quite right, and that's how it feels to me. And it's a huge shame. You know, you can't underplay just how important Klopp's backroom team are to him, but at the end of the day, this lad's not playing since half on Wednesday, you know what I mean? So no. it is important, but the lads on the pitch, the 11 who are going to get chosen to play against Rome, that's the most important thing at the minute, and that's, I think, that's got to be the focus after this all dies down, hopefully today. It's a huge shame. It'll be interesting to see whether the manager feels he needs to do something about it. Mm. Does he look to someone else to come in and, and, and be that, that brain, if you like? That he well, there's talk, wasn't there, of, of him sort of looking at the backroom staff in general over a period of time now. Like, yeah. the, you know, the fellow who was in charge of the, the physiotherapy side of things, he left. 
and wasn't replaced. And so there was an, you know, Linders was another one, as I mentioned. Uh, so there's an idea kicking around that, you know, there might be a bit of a shake up. But, you know, Buvac was on a six year deal, as I say, and, you know, it was obviously destined to stay here for, for as long as Klopp was, if you like. So it's clear something's gone wrong. It is a bit of a shame. It's a shame that it's in the lead up to, you know, one of our biggest games in the, in the history of the club. Not every week you're in a, a semi of a Champions League. And also this idea as well, I guess for everyone, for fans, for players, it might just creep into minds a little bit. The idea that he's the brain, that he's the fellow yeah. who, who does the substitutions and all that sort of stuff. You know, the, the, the idea that he, you know, he's the tactical fella, if you like, yeah. and, and you're suddenly taking that out. It's got to be a little bit. I mean, it, it's, it's hard to, without being you know, inside that inner circle, it's, it's difficult to understand just how much influence he has. You can only go off what people say, you know, people who've got close to the manager in the past. He does seem like a really, really key figure. So, of course, it's disappointing. I know my comment before was a little bit flippant. Um, it's, it's just coming, it's, it's just all about time. And I mean, from what, from what I was reading last night and from what people were saying, this feels like it's gone on for a while. You know, it, it, it feels, that it hasn't just happened overnight, you know. I don't think this is well, a result little, of the Stoke game, for instance, and all of a sudden they've had a falling out. This feels for it to have happened like this in such a big way, and we know how much emphasis Klopp puts on kind of his team that's around him. You can only imagine that this has been going on for a, a number of weeks. Yeah, and it's come to a, a point where they just can't find a solution, and they've had to agree to part ways. There's a few little hints in, perhaps, um, perhaps I'm just reading between the lines. There's a few little things in in a a report from Paul Joyce who is obviously one of the best connected journalists who covers Liverpool uh, unlike the fact that he was reporting this story last night um, but we won't go into that uh, but yeah Joyce he was talking about you know there was, there was a little bit of a fallout with, with Atcherberg back in November over um, a substitution against uh, Chelsea um, you know, Buvak had a bit of a cob on about that yeah. and wasn't speaking to yeah. him. And then there's, the, there's an idea that he throws in there as well about him not being that engaged or not that sort of into what was going on on Saturday. And, and so again, as you say, that sort of hints maybe at something more. But whatever it is, it, it doesn't. The, the club aren't going to comment on it any further. We, we won't hear anymore. On no, this. I don't. This will be that. I mean, you know, you remember, you know, I mentioned those past ones when people have moved on. The, 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 the walls are closing on this and there won't be anyone yeah. talking on it and we'll, we'll need to very quick, quickly move on. But on that, Robbo, I mean, you know, as much as it is disappointing to see a, an important member leave the backroom team at such a crucial time of the season, if what Joyce is saying is right there and there's been, you know, some issues in the games leading up to it and it's not felt quite right, you know, he's not happy with what he's been seeing, you can't have that. You can't no. have that at such an important time either. So, you know, maybe the managers looked at it and thought, well, Yes, he's important, and he's been an important part of what I've been doing, you know, Mines, Dortmund, Liverpool. But if, if there's too much of a conflict between the two of them, you can't have that going on either, because no, that's no. Not, that doesn't send out the right message ahead of a huge game. Um, and we all know how important Wednesday night is, and, you know, at the end of the day, these preparations for Roma will have been going on for a long time and as I say I'm sure Buvac does feed into a lot of the prep that goes into these huge games but at the end of the day the manager's in charge you know we lives and dies by his decisions and his results and we've got to put faith in that he, he knows what he's doing um, but it all comes back to the thing of it, it not being ideal at this stage of the season. Um, in better news and, and the cynic might say uh, this was re released ahead of time surely not mate, uh, <laughs> knowing that this other news was coming you know because the best way to cover bad news is good news uh, but for me you know as a uh, signed a new contract officially signed a new contract it's been floating around for a, night, a while the idea that he had done but yeah the club have come out and said done a little video as well which was which was boss and dead funny and a uh, fair play to the social media team for that I'm sure you've all seen it him sort of doing a no look contract sign and then uh, whistling alle 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 as he walks away. Uh, <laughs> nice touch, but yeah, contract until uh, 2023 for Bobby. Um, he's still only 26. Uh, the idea there as well that Salah and uh, Mane will also be offered better terms very soon as well. Hope, hopefully that's true. Uh, and yeah, I mean, what, what, what can you say about Firmino? It, 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 I mean, a lot of people keep saying things like he's underrated and people aren't talking about him that much. 
everyone I know who goes the match talks about Firmino yeah. all the time. Yeah. I think we're all we all know he's boss. If the rest of the football world and analysts and whatever you want don't talk about him. Well, that's their problem, but we know, and that's why everyone's absolutely delighted. It's his best season of his career uh, so far in terms of output, 27 goals and assisting 16 in 49 games, which is phenomenal figures, and probably if you didn't have Mo kicking round, he'd be the star of the season, wouldn't he? I mean, you can't argue with the numbers. I think it's, it's dead interesting how it's panned out, because I think there was lots of talk on the Anfield rap, just fans in general were saying, beginning of the season, do we need someone who's going to who's going to bag 20, 25 oh. goals. Well, we've got a lad in Mane who's probably going to hit 20. Firmino's probably going to hit 30. And Salah's already at 40. So it's never been an issue, has it? I think in terms of the impact Firmino's had, he's been absolutely, he's been magnificent. He's mm. been outstanding. You can see how important he is to, to, the, to the manager, to, to the players. You know, the fans absolutely adore him. And there's been talk of a, of a new contract for a while now, and it's the absolute right thing to do. You mentioned the other two lads as well hugely imperative that we get them signed as well because these are the guys who you know whilst they, they take the glory because of what you see in terms of output on the pitch week in week out that's not to say the lads behind aren't doing a great job but there's no doubt about it they're the three that everyone fears and as Liverpool fans they're the three that excite you I think there's there's work to be done next season in terms of you know, backing up some of those three. I think yeah, I know we'll, we'll come definitely. on and talk about the Stoke game in a bit, but I think, you know, we're asking those lads to keep going and keep going every single game. And it's difficult when you've got huge games on the horizon like Roma to maybe be going full throttle, 100% all the time. But in terms of Firmino, I just love watching him play. I mean, it's hard to think over over time, as long as we've been watching footy, to think of a lad who, who does what he does, you know, no, in terms no. of the goals, in terms of the assists, but in terms of the, the selflessness where he's willing to kind of sacrifice himself at times for the good of the side. I know there's always been a lot of talk about, you know, Harry Kane, hasn't it, in terms of how goal greedy he is, and I get that from number nines, but for me, you know, he gets goals, but he's also a guy who He's just as happy if he's supplying one of his teammates as well. You remember the kind of the game at Stoke where he's got an opportunity to yeah. knock one in, and he may have been offside. Who knows? But the whole goal bonus that he's got around his numbers and stuff. But he just seems like a guy who's very, very much about team ethic. He loves playing for this football club. You can see that. I mean, he's coming in, he's bouncing in, he's whistling a lay a lay. He's doing. You he don't get a player who's laughing. happy who's not. You know, he's, yeah. he's just immersed himself in the football club. And he just feels like a, an adopted scouser, and he's fucking brilliant. Yeah, he's a character, and, and, and we love him for that as well. And you know, he's, he has got the whitest teeth in the world as well. <laughs> he's just um, real. He's but a, 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 real. apparently, Klopp calls him the engine. Um, and and Firmino, Firmino says he's very happy to be to be known as that. Says he never leaves anything behind. Um, and, and you know we all know that because we're watching him every weekend. He's great. Yeah, briefly the Stoke game. Don't want to go loads into this because uh, we did a new video uh, called the post match pint for the first time ever. And um, that's on the YouTube channel. So if you missed that one, go back and have a look. We uh, filmed it in Hotel Tier straight after the game, um, and it seems to have gone down well, which is good. And I really appreciate all the comments everyone sent over because it was a bit of a trial run so you know we're, we're taking all your feedback in mind and uh, hopefully be having another crack at that soon um, but yeah the Stoke game yeah I mean look not going through it all again but you know it, it is what it is it, it wasn't a, it wasn't a cracker by any circumstances obviously um, could have should have um, could have should have had a pint uh, a pint had one of them but no we should have had a penalty again uh, and there's a bit of a thing now developing, you know, why aren't Liverpool getting penalties? A lot of people talking about it. Uh, obviously, Spurs have had more pens That's at, wild, at, at Anfield this Absolutely season wild. than Liverpool, uh, which is mad. So, yeah, I mean, um, I see some negative um, conversations creeping in now as well about the idea that, you know, we haven't wrapped up top four. We should have wrapped up top four by now. And, you know, it's now going to go into the Chelsea game. But, you know, a draw against Chelsea mm. does it, basically. Or, and, and obviously, if, if we can beat them, it does it. But then you've got this Roma game there and the travel. And, yeah, a few people just getting a little bit worried that, it, that, that we messed this up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think it's OK to be disappointed when you don't beat West Brom and you don't beat Stoke. You know, two teams who are, who are poor, really struggling in the league. But I think when you, you've got to have some perspective on it as well. And when you've got semi-finals of Champions League games around the corner... It's understandable that league results might might suffer a little bit. I think when you've got a squad like Liverpool have got, where you can't maybe make as many changes changes as you as you would like, and I think that's something the manager has to look to address next season. I'm sure he will. It's a challenge because 
you're asking, we touched on Firmino before, Salah, lads to go again. And with the greatest will in the world, I don't care who you are, you're going to have one eye on the game that's coming up. And they know the starting it. They exactly, know the starting that game. In so terms it's not of protecting like... yourself as well, it's so hard to say. And this is not me making excuses for them because you want no, them to be but... full throttle. But human nature will mean that they're looking to probably protect themselves a little bit more than if it was a, a cup final, for instance, or if it was, you know, Wednesday night. Let's have it right. But if, if no one's holding back Wednesday night, Robbo. No. Everyone's going full throttle. If it was genuine competition for places in those, in those things, I think it would have made a difference as well. So, yeah. you know, <clears throat> if they're playing knowing that there's a lad sat on the bench who is as good or nearly as good as they are, then you're going to be like, I'm playing Wednesday, whatever you do, so I'm going to be at, at my very, very yeah. best. Whereas, as you say, knowing that, knowing that they're guaranteed to play, I think... You know, the, yes, the professionals. Yes, everyone worked on the psychology. But as you say, you just it, it cannot creep in that. Okay, we need to beat Stoke. We should beat Stoke. All that, but it will be there. It's it's only human nature that to be going. Yeah, but Rome, semi-final of the Champions League, chance to play in the final of the European Cup. You, you can't hide away from it. No, it's, it's going to be in your head. And obviously, if it, if it all went tits up and we didn't get top four, then obviously then you can start beating people over the head. But at the minute. It, for me, it's not the right time. There's too many other big things happening, about to happen. Wednesday night's huge. You can't underestimate just how big a football match there is for this football club. Of course, you want to go and beat Stoke. And actually, there's two chances there in the first half. I mean, I don't care who you are. You celebrate when Mount Salah goes through one yeah. on one. I think it's a goal. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I'm up off my seat. I think it's in. Trent, um, well. he just gets stuck under his feet a little bit. You know, Danny Ings, Danny Ings has one that's just, just offside. Gets called probably correctly. So decent they, finish. They defend quite well as well, don't they? There's yeah. lots of like last ditch blocks, and you know they were very deep second half. They're fighting for the lives. You know, they, they know the probably, and it probably isn't enough they for them. Nicked it as well. They could have nicked it. Short across the end. Thank fuck he didn't score. Um, but when you look at someone like Danny Ings, and I don't want to get on his back, because it's hard to judge him at the minute in terms of you know, where he is as a footballer because of all the injuries he's had. But the drop-off probably is just too much. And yeah. when you're asking lads to come in and replicate what you've seen the other front three do, it's really, really hard. And you take one of them out and you can see it impacts on the team. And we just haven't got the strength and depth throughout the side where you can make five or six changes and it, for it to be seamless. I know we've got injuries, but you're always going to have injuries. So I think... The challenge for the manager next season is, is to make that that squad that little bit stronger so you can go on three or four four fronts and it not look much of a drop-off if you start to make changes. But it's dead hard at the minute. We just haven't got the personnel. And you can say, well, could he have done more in January? Maybe, but we know he's a manager who he only wants what he wants. He's yeah. not willing to accept plan B or plan C. There's certain lads he wants and he's willing to wait for them. So we are where we are, but let's make no mistake about it. Wednesday is the game. It's absolutely huge. And I actually think, I think we'll go to Chelsea and beat them. I, I really do. I, I mean, I know Chelsea are picking up results and they're, they're kind of putting wins on the board. But I'm still not seeing anything there that makes us think we should go to Stamford Bridge next Sunday and worry about them. I think we'll go there and win. And if, you, and if worse comes to the worst and we don't win and we get beat, well, we've still got the Brighton game. And I know you don't want it to be the last game of the season it with that pressure. Season. But it was, it was. Like, and... End of the season, you have big games sometimes. We'll, we'll deal with it. We'll be all right. Uh, we'll be back in a minute. We'll have a look at the day's papers. All right, then, back with the papers. Um, and, you know, the first thing that's caught me attention, you know me by now, if you watch this. Uh, big Sam. <laughs> big Sam. What's he done now, the beaut? Call me <laughs> Mr Marmite. <laughs> now, this feels like a, a missed opportunity here, Sam, because... Uh, what he's saying is, you know, I'm not everyone's, I'm not everyone's cup of tea. Uh, some people like Marmite, some people don't. But you could have just said, you could have just said, I'm like gravy. <laughs> you could have said, some people like gravy, some people don't. Some people have gravy on chips, but some people don't. Some people have gravy with mash, some people don't. It was right there for you, and you went Marmite. Go gravy. Go gravy, Sam, next time, yeah? Uh, okay, He's um, being kind on himself, saying Marmite, by the way. I know, yeah, because... I've heard even his missus hates him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no one likes him, dude. The Blues aren't having him, they're never having him. But there's loads of stories now that he... There's rumours that he could get another season. Well, yeah, he's saying himself. He's, fucking, he's, say, he's basically saying himself. Make, he's make, make, make it happen, make it happen. Uh, OK, uh, next one is that uh, Steven Gerrard, as you will know, we, we discussed this briefly on Friday, uh, heavily linked with the Rangers job uh, to the extent where some reports are basically saying, you know, it's, it's not far off being a, a done deal, being uh, discussed at 
at length. Um, but obviously, Celtic beat them 5 0, sealed another title. Um, and, you know, not unreasonably, papers are saying things like, you know, are you sure you want this, Stevie? Um, really mixed bag in terms of what people are saying about it as well. Um, certainly from a fan's perspective, I was reading the BBC's live blog before on the way in, and, you know, most of the fans up there were like saying, you know, it, it doesn't suit anyone this really, you know, a, a young a young manager, you know, just starting out really being thrown into that, the expectation that'll be on him, he'll be expected to turn over Celtic and Celtic have already got a good squad, all the money, Rangers have got a bad squad and none of the money, um, you know, it, it just doesn't seem to sort of suit anyone really, but then you had Alan Shearer saying, oh, it's an absolute no-brainer and if Stevie goes there, loads of other players will <coughs> want to go there and they want to be with him and all that, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that at all because I just think it's still Scottish football. Mm. It's still uh, Rangers. There's still a little bit of a doubt. You know, they're not. They're not even de facto number two up there. You know, Aberdeen is a sort of knocking round and can finish second. I think. So you know, it's it's a big job. It's a big ask. And you know, he, yeah, he's done his badges and yeah, he's done his season with the kids. And you know, most most of us that have you know, we we've sat in on press conferences with him and he's been very impressive. Um, the reports back from sort of Kirby is that he's doing a good job with the kids, but this is a different kind yeah. of fish, isn't it? Yeah. And, it and it's like, well, for, for me as someone who loves the fella, he's one of my heroes and all that sort of thing. I just think I don't want to see him like tainted so early yeah. on in his managerial career. The way, the way, for instance, John Barnes was when he went up there. Yeah, I think my, my take on this is, is similar. I would like to see him continue his his apprenticeship. He'd be like with Liverpool, do keep doing what you're doing, keep learning your trade. I don't really see how it works out that well for Gerard because I think even if he goes there and, and he beats Celtic and he wins the league, I, I still think outside of Scotland, you'll still have people say, well, it's, it's Scotland. Yeah. And all right, they are so far behind Celtic at the minute in terms of everything on the pitch, off the pitch. But I don't know whether he'd get huge amounts of credit, credit outside of Scotland to say, brilliant, well done for, for kind of maybe winning the league, but I think even that will take such a long time, given what I know about That's Rangers, about and Robert, well, listen, I'm not, a, I'm not an expert on Rangers Football Club, but from what I've heard, it's not been particularly well run no. for a number of years, so you're going into it with issues around finances, how poorly the club's been run, he's going to need assurances, but I think if he fails, well then, you failed in Scotland, mm. and then so you get, as you said before, you're tainted straight away, so I'm not too sure whether that risk versus reward thing, there's enough there for him to say, I'm going to go and take it. I think there will be players who will want to play for Gerard because his names, I mean, Steve Clark's been mentioned for the job, for instance. Now, if you're a player, Steve Clark, Steven Gerard, you're going to get attracted to that name, mm -hmm. but he's still in his trade, and I think it's such a huge jump. It's that goldfish bowl that is Glasgow. I, Did I you just, watch it? That, that, yeah, it didn't go well for him, I have to say. I mean, it could have been 10. It I mean, Chad, I could have a game. He could have you know a game. I mean? And he'd still be the best player, <laughs> by the way. I mean, it, it just feels like a, the wrong move. But Stevie will have taken advice. And obviously, there's talk of Gary Mack going up there with him. Mm. You know, someone who knows the area, knows the club. But it still feels a risky one for me. And if I was him, I'd probably swear. But I, I have to say, I can see why... You know, Rangers still are classed as a big club, you know, regardless of the whole Scotland thing, and there's only them and Celtic up there. So the fan base is huge, and, it, and he's probably thinking, well, if I get it right, it kind of propels me, but I just don't know if it does or not, because I still think you, you're labelled with, with that it's just Scotland thing. Mm. And people might not like hearing that, but that's, that's the reality of it. That's what people will say. And, you know, Brendan's winning leagues after league up there. I think they're on seven now, consecutive titles. But even now, Brendan doesn't probably get the credit he thinks no, he deserves. So, yeah. I, I don't know. I think it's one, if I was him, I'd be thinking really, really carefully about it. Uh, yeah, so Rome then. Uh, we are flying out to Rome uh, later today. So, we'll be out there. We'll be doing podcasts out there. Loads of coverage on the social media. So, follow all our channels. Um, in fact, we're going to get, as soon as we get there tonight, we're, we're doing a podcast. We're doing Under the Lights uh, from Rome. We'll be doing Talk and Reds it's from not bad, Rome. Not, not a bad life, mate, is it? It's all right, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's all right. And, uh, I've got my flag, my flag, my banner, whatever you want to call it, is done. Um, it's currently hanging up over there and people are walking into Avenue HQ going... Mate, the interest in that, the interest in that flag has been huge, by the way. It has, it has. I mean, I put it on Instagram yesterday and it was like, 
it, it's mad how sort of like people are following me on there who, who obviously watch this yeah. and they're like, oh, well, in, because it was Kelly who made yeah. it. And like, well, in, Kelly, you've got to marry your missus now and all this kind of stuff. All, That's all a bit strong, of, isn't it? Well, the kids seen it and they were going, are you going to marry your mum now and all this? Because she's made this flag. And I'm like, I mean, it's a good a, flag, but I mean, good flag. That's, that's a bit of a leap. No, absolutely. <laughs> Steady on. Um, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, um, but yeah, uh, there's. I mean, the only the only podcast, by the way, that um, maybe I should little flag up is that you know post match one. Um, the talk is that we could be kept in up to two hours after the match um, on Wednesday night. Uh, obviously, with the issues around safety, security, and everything else. So that being the case, uh, us being able to record one in Rome will obviously take some time because some of us are flying safe back out again. Some of us are staying. The ones who are staying can obviously record something. So I think what the plan is is there'll be a home and away. So there's some there's some Anfield rappers who aren't going over to Rome. They're going to record one in Liverpool straight after the match, and then us who are out there, uh, a few of us will record one as well. But that God knows what time that'll end up going. Out. We'll see. Uh, it's all interesting stuff um, over the weekend then you may have seen that there's been a further unhelpful coverage in Italy of the, the build up to this game uh, we're seeing more and more the idea that there's a thousand dangerous yeah. Liverpool ultras headed to Rome tooled up or whatever one paper even had you know they'd done um, help uh, the Beatles uh, mocked it up at, but with hooligans holding all kinds of weapons and stuff and this idea that we're going to team up with Lazio I mean we all know we all know that it's absolute nonsense. There isn't a thousand Liverpool fans headed out there looking for trouble. My my issue with it is that saying that there's a thousand, there's only five thousand going, by the way. So you're essentially saying to, to to Italy, to Rome, to everyone, one in five of Liverpool fans that arrive in Rome are here looking for trouble. We're not. Mm -hmm. We're not. Uh, but, it, but equally, from our perspective, I think you know it's one of them where you need to be using common sense big time if you're going on this trip. So maybe keep it down, you know, colours and all that. You know, don't go wandering off on your tards. Or you know, there's lots and lots of advice out there anyway. Uh, Tony Barrett put it out there. It's all on his Twitter feed. The club have put announcements out. The Foreign Office has. Uh, Rome Police have. It's all on Liverpool's website. It all got released there yesterday. If you're going over, have a have a big big read of that. Take it in. Uh, follow the advice about where to go and where not to go. Get one of these shuttle buses to the ground. Get one of the shuttle buses back again. Don't be walking across that bridge because why would you? Um, Did you hear about them about the uh, you can't wear Adidas trainees? Oh, <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> You're fucked, lad. I know, I'm not having that. I'm not having that. I mean, Get the Lonsdales out. There's a, few, no, no, <laughs> there's a few people having a laugh about it, isn't there? Seeing this morning, people like tweeting, uh, tweeting Tony Barrett Absolutely saying things wild. like, you know, I've heard you're all right if you're in a group of 20, but there's only 17 of us going. And then uh, there's another one saying, you know, um, what type of plug is it, Tony? Is it three pin or two pin? <laughs> I mean, look, we, we can have a bit of a laugh about it, but I think there's a serious message in there as well. I mean, you know, there's stuff here on the back of the papers today. Uh, 2,000 Italian police out to stop uh, Liverpool fans being attacked by ultras and all this sort of stuff. I mean, it's not just it's not just their ultras that have got a reputation, though. It's, it's Italian police as well. I think they will be in the full riot gear, mm. bands out and all that. So, you know, don't give them an excuse yeah. either. If you're asked to do something when you're over there, I will probably say you should probably do it and not be arguing with them because they're not going to be shy on pulling buttons out. I was speaking to people over the weekend who were in Rome last time and they were saying, you know, they saw various sites involving the police over there. So if the police in Rome want to stereotype about us, I'm more than capable of stereotyping about you lads as well. And you're, you're batting crazy, your boys. So if you're going, don't mess around with the police. Stay in the safe areas. Read all that advice. And uh, if you're not going, listen to all the Anfield rap stuff. Enjoy it. Look out for my flag. Come and say hello if you see us. Uh, that about covers it, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I would say your piece with... Gabe Marcotti was really good. It was, I'm not yeah. just saying it because you no, can sit was... next to me. I, I listened to it <laughs> and it was um, it was quality. It's worth, I, I, yeah, it's it, worth it's a It's definitely listen. worth it. I mean, I thought his take was, was 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 excellent to be honest, and it gives a really really strong insight into what people can expect. I agree with you. I think it's a bit of a worry that narrative that's being spun by the Italians. It almost feels like they're trying to. They're almost. It's irresponsible. Yeah, it, it is. But they're looking for something already, aren't they? They're trying to create something that isn't even there, and that's a concern for me. So, I absolutely echo what you've just said there in terms of people just staying safe. I know for everyone who goes out there, comes back 
the same way they went out there. So fingers crossed. Yeah, it's irresponsible what, what what the police out there have been putting, and also I think it's irresponsible by the newspapers just reporting it straight. You're allowed to challenge these things, lads. You're allowed to use the internet to your advantage. You're allowed to speak to Merseyside Police, Liverpool Football Club, Liverpool fans, and all of those groups will tell you that this idea that there's a thousand people following Liverpool looking for trouble, absolutely not. Um, and and you know, no arrest in Europe this year, lads. No, as well. I, know, I know. It's absolutely wild what they've said. It's absolutely wild but you just hope that the thing is that everyone's looking at us now I yeah. think everyone's, everyone's looking at Liverpool looking at Liverpool fans people who don't like the city don't like the fans you know bigoted journalists blitz people who you know don't like what's going on around hills where even and, and there are people like that don't you worry about it so they're all looking for an opportunity here to say see I told you including their police out there as well so look if you're going Try and behave yourself. You, you're flying the flag for Liverpool. Don't give them the opportunity to be writing what they want to write. Stay safe. Uh, that's been talking Reds.